Welcome to Computer Science 122. My name is Matt Williamson, and I'll be presenting the material for this course. The first thing you're going to want to do in this course is to read over the syllabus. I can't emphasize this enough. It's going to have all the important information that you need about the course. It's going to talk about the instructor, how to contact the instructor, such as with email or phone. It's going to go over the topics of this course. It's going to go over what the instructor expects out of you and what you can expect out of the instructor. It's going to go over the different assessments, the grading scale, uh, late policy, cheating policy, schedule, deadlines, all of that. So please make sure you do read over the syllabus before anything else. The next thing I want to mention is because this course is online, make sure you get the book. You may think that just watching the lecture videos is enough. It might be, but I doubt it. Each lecture is going to come with a reading assignment. That's going to come from the book. So make sure you get the book, um, which you can find in the syllabus, by the way. So it has all the information there, but make sure you get the book so you read it along as you're watching the lecture videos. Now, as for the coursework itself, you're going to find it's very similar to what you did in CS121. It's first going to have some lecture quizzes. As I mentioned, every single lecture is going to have a small quiz associated with it. You'll be allowed to use your notes and your book for it, but you do need to make sure you complete those. And this is just to make sure that you did uh, watch the lecture videos and read the book. There will also be some homework assignments. So you'll be given some different problems. You have to, whether it's to write up algorithms or do analysis or do some stuff in Java, but you're going to have to uh, do some written assignments and turn that into your instructor. There will be programming projects. So you'll be asked to write several different programs. So just be prepared for that. There will be weekly lab assignments, just like we did in CS121. Each week there will be a lab assignment and you'll have a week to complete it. There will be exams. As far as the number of exams, it's going to depend on the instructor. There could be just one midterm exam. There could be two exams throughout the course. So I refer to you to the syllabus once again. And then, of course, there will be a final exam. So make sure you're ready for that. Um, now, as far as completing the work, it is preferred that you turn it in on time. But if you can't, you can turn it in late, but there will be a penalty for turning in late work. As far as what the late penalty is, that's going to depend by your instructor. Some instructors will say like 10% off every day. Some will say half off every day. Some actually don't accept any late work. So please read over the syllabus to make sure that you understand what the late policy is. And finally, I cannot emphasize this enough. Please do not cheat in the course. You may think because it's an online course or it's an introduction course that you can find some material online that solves all the problems that you have on your homework assignments and exams, but that does not do you any good. Sure, you might be able to turn it in, but that's just going to hurt you in the long run. When you're taking the exams, you're not going to be allowed to use any reference material, and it's going to be set up where you cannot Google search the answers. So you have to make sure you know it. And if you do uh, get stuff off the internet or from someone else, the instructor is going to be able to tell. I mean, if we see two different programs that have the exact same stuff in there and the exact same errors, we can tell pretty easily that you copied off of each other. So please do not cheat in this class. We'll now take a look at and see exactly what are we going to do in this course. So what are we going to do in this class? Well, the basic answer is we're going to solve more problems. We're going to focus on taking a look at additional problems that we did not see in CS121, and we're going to look at how we can actually solve those problems. So let me give you an example of one such problem. Uh, let's say we have a group of n numbers. We won't worry about what n actually is. It's just some number. We have some group of numbers. And let's say we want to find the kth largest number. So for some k, so for example, let's say k is 3 then we want to find the third largest number. Or if k is 5, we want to find the fifth largest number. So how would we go about solving this problem? And what we're going to find is that there's actually more than one way to solve this particular problem. 
In CS121, we kind of looked at a particular way of solving some problem, but what we're going to see here is there's more than one way to solve several of these problems. So the purpose of this course is that we're going to be introducing data structures and algorithms. And we talked about both of these concepts very briefly in CS121. So first, what is a data structure? Well, it's basically this arrangement of data that's in the computer's memory. So how do we actually uh, store and arrange the data in our computer? And we've seen at least one example in CS121. We've seen arrays, but there are other types of data structures as well. So we will take a look at arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues, binary trees, hash tables, and so forth. So these are all different types of data structures. So we have ways of arranging our data. So what's an algorithm? Well, we talked about that in CS121 as well very early on. But here, what we're going to be doing is looking at how we would actually manipulate or change the data in various ways. So when we saw an algorithm before, we had this list of steps. But really what's going on is we have this list of steps that actually allows us to make changes to the data that we've stored. So just to give an example, uh, maybe we want to search for a specific data item or we want to sort data. So how do we go about that? Well, we would create an algorithm that would give us the list of steps for sorting or rearranging our data or searching for a particular item in our data. If we have several algorithms for solving a particular problem, one question you're probably thinking is, is one algorithm better than the other? And the answer to that question is yes. There are cases where one algorithm is better than the other if it's faster. So if we have, if they both solve the same problem and one of them is faster, that's probably going to be the, the better one. I shouldn't say probably, it is the better one. So what we're going to find here is getting a working solution isn't good enough. So we need to take a look at how fast an, an algorithm runs. It's very important, especially if we're dealing with very large data sets. A lot of the programs that we wrote in CS121 and what we're actually going to write in this class too are very small data sets. But if you consider that the data set can deal with tons and tons of data, we're talking like terabytes of data, some of these algorithms would be very inefficient for that large data. So if I have two algorithms, for example, that solve the same problem, let's say one algorithm solves the problem in about 15 minutes. You might think that's not very great. And then let's say you have the other algorithm that takes like 15 hours to solve the same problem. You're probably going to pick the one that takes 15 minutes over the one that takes 15 hours. So we're going to be seeing that the time that it takes for an algorithm to run is very important. We'll also take a look at different techniques that allow us to improve the speed of a particular boat program. And we'll be looking at different bottlenecks or what are parts of the algorithm that take the most time. And if, if we can make improvements there, then our algorithms would actually run faster. So we want things to go fast. We want to solve these problems as fast as possible. We'll also be taking a look at some different approaches for storing our data. So if we're going to be taking a look at different data structures, we got to look at how we're actually storing them in our memory. And we're going to be looking at different algorithms on handling some of the common operations such as inserting or finding stuff or deleting. So how do we actually do those types of operations in these different data structures? Now, just like what we did in CS121, in this course, Java is going to be the programming language that we use in all the lab assignments and the programming assignments and all the examples that we're going to be doing in this course. But we're not done talking about everything that's available to us in Java. We've only hit the tip of the iceberg. So what we're going to do in this class is we're going to be looking at some more advanced features in Java, particularly the stuff in the object oriented programming side. So we've looked at classes and objects, but now we're going to take those a step further. And what we're going to find is that these will be useful in other courses. And also some of these features are available in other languages as well, such as C or other object oriented languages. So specifically, what we're going to do is we'll see how we can create classes and use classes that are actually derived from other classes. So in CS121, we created a class and then if we needed some other stuff, maybe we create a second class and we create objects of those classes and we put them in our main or our client. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to see that we can take a class and then we can create a class based on that original class. 
Uh, we're also going to be uh, looking at how we can create and run graphical user, user interface programs or what we call GUI programs. So in CS121, we just did console programs. So we, we opened up Dr. Java, we run some programs and we had a little terminal at the bottom that just pretty much did console input and output. We did some stuff with files, but it still runs to the console. So we are going to look in here at how we would create GUI programs. Now we're going to use those in the lab assignments. So I was saying earlier that in the lab, we're going to introduce some new things. It's going to be mostly the GUI stuff. We're not going to do too much GUI stuff in all the examples we're going to do in the course, but for the lab assignments, you will be learning how to implement GUI programs. And then near the end of the course, we're going to actually introduce a new concept, which is called recursion. You may have heard this in passing, but what we're seeing here is a method is recursive if that method calls itself. So usually we have a method that calls other methods, like main calls other methods. But here we're going to be looking at methods that call itself. And you might think this seems like it's a bad thing to have a method call itself, but we're going to see some benefits to this. And what we will actually find, find out is that there are some very complex problems that we can solve real easily if we use recursion.